very often we associate a tempo with a palo, like solea is very slow, alegria is fast, buleria is very fast. And if I ask you what is the difference between solea and buleria por solea, or the difference between tango and tiento, I imagine your answer would be the speed, or better said, the tempo. Solea is slower than buleria por solea, tiento is slower than tango. But is tempo really so important, so determining? Is it really part of the essence of the identity of a palo? And can we always rely on the tempo to recognize a palo? Hi, this is Guillermo Guillén for Flamenco Maps. Welcome to my channel. Whether you dance flamenco, you play guitar, you sing, you play palmas, you play cajon, or you just love it and you want to better understand how it works, today I want to give you another paddle to navigate the ocean of confusions in flamenco and avoid oversimplifications about palos and tempo. So first of all, quickly, what is the tempo? Tempo is the speed at which the music goes, the pace at which the beats flow. It is usually expressed in BPM, beats per minute. It's very simple. For example, if you have 60 beats per minute, it means you have one beat per second. At 120 beats per minute, you have two beats per second. And at 252 beats per minute, you have many beats per second. How to identify the palos is one of the first things you want to do when learning flamenco. It's a vast subject for an entire course, but in general, it works like this. You are listening to something that you don't know or attending a flamenco show, and the first thing that crosses your mind is, what palo is this? Is it a solea, a tango, a cigarilla, a malagueña, an alegria? And you start analyzing in order to find information that can help you deduce the palo. Sometimes it's obvious, like when you hear it's probably an alegria. Other palos, like bulería, are easily recognizable thanks to their fast tempo. The problem is that there are many palos that don't have obvious, unique, distinctive features. And this is why we often hesitate between different possible palos, because they share common characteristics. For example, on a 12 beats compass with the flamenco mode, we have many different palos. It could be solea, buleria por solea, fandango por solea, buleria, jaleos, romance, la caña, el polo, bambera, or a 4 beats compass with flamenco mode. It could be tiento, taranto, tango, zapateao, rumba, tanguillo. So in our mission of palo recognition, we are tempted to use the tempo as a distinctive feature because of widely held ideas like bulería is faster than bulería por solea, bulería por solea is faster than solea, rumba is faster than tango, tango is faster than tiento. But now just listen to these examples. Si lo güey, so me cruje, como cruje en el opinión. Como cruje en el opinión, como cruje en el opinión, no me dolería. Here we have a solea that is faster than Buleria por solea. Llega usted favorris moro de decir la suma sayo. 
y haga usted favor, rey moro, de decirle a su vasallo, no porque me ve cautivo, trate de darme un mal pago. Es que sí. Ya viene el tren de la dos, ya viene el tren de la dos, ya viene la torre hermana que ya llega a mi corazón. And the tiento that is faster than a tango. So the tempo trick doesn't work here. And it's not because these examples are exceptions. It's because in fact the tempo trick is just that, a trick. Because things are a bit more complex and therefore a bit more interesting than that. We just said that there are common ideas like solea is slow, buleria por solea is faster, uh, buleria is very fast. But this is a bit vague, right? Because what does fast or slow mean? What is the precise limit between fast and very fast? This thing is slower than that thing, but how much slower? We have to clarify one thing. More than a specific tempo, each palo has a tempo range, like between this tempo and that tempo. In classical music, for example, we use Italian words that give a very precise indication of the range. For example, andante, the walking pace, from 76 BPM to 108 BPM, or allegro, happily, between 120 BPM and 168 BPM. On many scores, on many music sheets, you have the precise indication of the range that the composer wanted, or even more precisely, a BPM number. But there are no BPM numbers, there are no specific range, and there are no precise limits for the flamenco palo. In order to keep the sense of the compass, the sonichete, the identity of a compass, it's better to remain within a range. If it's way too slow or too fast, you lose the musicality, the dynamics. But the ranges are very wide. They are very slow allegrias. <laughs> and very fast alegrias. They are very slow bulerias. And very fast bulerias. They are very slow, Solea. Cuando se murió mi madre con mi pañuelo tapé tu cara. And fast, Solea. So They are very slow tangos. fast tangos. Because these ranges are so open, sometimes the tempo of different palos can overlap. And when these palos have their main characteristics in common, like the compass, the harmony context, the type of written letra, then it can become very difficult to distinguish them, like solea and buleria por solea, or tiento and tango. What is the difference between a fast solea and a slow buleria por solea? What is the difference between a fast tiento and a slow tango? Definitely not the tempo, because this is a parameter that is far too variable. 
But before telling you what is the real difference, let's see what the variation of the tempo within the same palo depends on. The variations on the tempo within a range depend on many things, such as the era. If you listen to old recordings, everything goes much faster than today. But this was also due to technology. The first recordings were made on wax cylinders with a very limited recording time, two minutes. It was necessary to go fast if you wanted to record an entire cante. With the invention of the 78 flat discs, artists could take more time and make the cante both longer and slower. There are also trends. For example, a few decades ago, the singer used to sing Paul Sigiriya at a very slow tempo. But today, many Sigirillas are interpreted again at a very fast tempo, like the old way of the old recordings. It also depends on each artist, each singer, guitarist, dancer, percussionist, according to their personal taste, but also according to their technique. There are people who can dance, sing and play faster than others. It depends on the day, on the moment, because the same artist can interpret the same thing, the same cante, the same palo, at different tempo, depending on the moment, the energy level, the taste of that moment. But there is one more thing, and that's maybe the most important thing. The context. Is it a cante, a baile, or a toque we are talking about? because that changes everything, and this is for sure the greatest source of confusion. When we make statements like this, pureria por solea is faster than solea, tango is faster than tiento, we mix up the different contexts, cante, baile, and toque, and we end up oversimplifying. Although it's very often true, statistically it works, it is not true essentially. In a baile or a toque context, the tempo parameter is much more important and much more distinctive. A baile por tiento is much slower than a baile por tango. A baile por solea is usually much slower than a baile por bureria por solea. But it's definitely not true for a cante. A big problem in flamenco and in life in general is that we think of everything through the prism of what we do or what we are more sensitive to. In the case of flamenco, mainly the baile and the guitar, because there are many more dancers and guitarists out there than singers. And this is what we call a cognitive bias. The tendency of the human brain to simplify information processing through a filter of personal experience and preferences. In short, it's not the same to say that a baile por solea is slow than the palo solea is slow. This is oversimplifying. It's like saying all the cows have horns and anything that has horns is a cow. You can see the limits of this kind of logic. So where is the real difference? A palo is a subtle combination of many elements, rhythm, harmony, melody, poetic metrics, and yes, at some point, the tempo, especially for the baile. But if you want to have a complete and thorough vision of the essence, the identity of a palo, there are other elements to take into account far before the tempo. This is what I will explain in detail in other videos, but here I want to quickly explain the previous example. The fundamental, essential difference between bureria por solea and solea is the cante, specifically the melody of the cante, in other words, the styles. There is a full video on what is a style in flamenco. It's not the compass, it's not the tempo, it's not the guitar. I know you guitarists and don't tell me that we play solea por arriba and bureria por solea por medio. This is another thing that goes to the tips and tricks category. We'll talk about that another day. If you listen to a cantaor singing a palo seco without guitar, without palmas, only his voice, even without understanding the lyrics, or even without lyrics at all, just the melody. You can say this is solea and this is bureria por solea. You don't need anything else and definitely not the tempo. One day I'll make a video about the difference between solea, solea por bureria and bureria por solea, because there is a lot of cleaning to be done there, but not today. The fundamental essential difference between tango and tiento is the compass but not the four beats, because both of them are on a four beats compass. 
but more precisely the way we give life to this compass through the subdivisions. There are melodies or styles that we can find indifferently por tiento or por tango, especially in the styles from Cadiz. But nowadays, because this is the result of a long process, the way we express the compass por tiento and por tango is very different. I'll show you with El Tito. See, at the same tempo, 120 BPM, I can play por tango, por tiento, por rumba or por tanguillo. Tango. Tiento. Slow rumba. I won't go into detail, but you can clearly hear, you can clearly perceive the difference, right? And the tempo is not in question here. Like almost everything in flamenco, what seems straightforward and simple never really is. And that's what makes it beautiful and fascinating, right? To summarize, just remember that the tempo is not that important. It really depends on the context. Relying on the tempo to identify a palo can be misleading, but most importantly, it is a superficial way of understanding the palos and flamenco in general. It is, as so many other things, a dangerous shortcut that gives only a superficial understanding and a wrong vision of how flamenco works and what a palo is. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it could help. If it helped, you can also help me by liking this video, sharing it, leave me a comment. Please also consider supporting my work on Patreon. I leave the link in the description. And as always, go and visit flamencomaps.com where I explain my classes, my courses, and my way of teaching flamenco. I see you there. Till then, don't forget, play palmas and listen to cantes.